This problem is about what happens when you mix a solution of a weak acid with a strong base. Often this is the way buffers are made, except this is the way to make buffers that students rec have the most difficulty identifying as making a buffer. So in this case, I'm mixing together ascorbic acid, which is a weak acid, with sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. When this happens, we need to think about the reaction that occurs between the ascorbic acid and the sodium hydroxide. They're gonna to react to form water and sodium ascorbate. In addition, we need to think about the moles of each of those materials. So we take the molarity and the volume of the ascorbic acid and the molarity and the volume of the sodium hydroxide and use those to calculate the number of moles of ascorbic acid and sodium hydroxide. This is not a buffer problem. This is a stoichiometry problem like you did in first semester general chemistry. What you should notice is that there's more moles of ascorbic acid than there are sodium hydroxide. So now when the reaction happens, this reaction is gonna to go to completion and the sodium hydroxide is the limiting reagent. So that's gonna give us 0.1 moles of sodium and 0.1 moles of ascorbate. And in the end, we're gonna end up with zero sodium hydroxide and 0.075 moles of ascorbic acid. We have written the separate moles of sodium and ascorbate to remind you that the sodium is essentially a spectator ion and we often will not talk about its concentration or its role in reactions because it doesn't contribute to the acidity or basicity of the solution. So now we need to go on to the next step and figure out the pH. So what we have in our solution at this point is ascorbic acid and ascorbate. You can call it sodium ascorbate if you like. So now we're gonna go to step B and figure out what is the pH of this solution after the reaction happens. Remember that the ascorbate is the conjugate base of ascorbic acid. So we'll write out the chemical reaction of ascorbic acid ionizing to make ascorbate. It's handy to write that reaction in case it reminds you where the henderson hasselbalch equation comes from and the fact that ascorbate is the conjugate base of ascorbic acid. We have our moles of ascorbic acid and moles of ascorbate. Those are handy for us when we go to find the pH of the solution. Remember that the um, pKa of ascorbic acid is 4.097. We can calculate that from the ascorbic acid's Ka. And then we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to help us figure out the pH. We have moles of ascorbic acid and ascorbate here. It is okay to stay with moles and not go back into molarity because both the ascorbic acid and the ascorbate are in the same solution and so their volumes are gonna count, cancel when I change from moles to molarities. So I can plug the numbers in and I get the pH at the end of the reaction between ascorbic acid and sodium hydroxide is 4.22.